Hey, hello everybody. Welcome to uh, Start Continue special presentation. Special presentation. I uh, hope this thing is working. Uh, we're going to take apart the dictaphone dictograph today. We're going to take apart that thing live on camera, see what the date codes are, see if we can figure out the uh, uh, the age and um, see what's rattling around in there. Uh, we're going to find out what the deal is with this thing. So I thought we'd do it live, get it out of the way, and then you guys can join me in the chat and give me some uh, ideas of, you know, what I should be looking for or things I'm missing, anything like that. Uh, it, was, it was a bit of a trial getting the stream going. I haven't used a, a live YouTube stream in a while. And, of course, it didn't want to work. So I'm actually having to use... Um, but the new Internet Explorer browser, whatever the heck that's, uh, Edge, because Chrome does not like uh, my cameras. It wouldn't launch this stream. So let me know if everything's working, if you can hear me. Uh, I'm using a new browser for this. We'll see how it goes. Don't forget to hit the like button, hit subscribe. And uh, like I said, we're going to dig in to the dictograph. And uh, I'm going to switch the camera around. I'm going to put it up here so it's looking down and uh, you can see what's going on inside of it. I'll turn on some extra lights, but uh, this is the deal. I don't know if you saw it on the collectors. I showed this thing as being donated by uh, Derek from the Not So Special podcast and Dollar Dork's fame. He found this at the side of the road, abandoned, and he knows I have a bit of a phone collection. So uh, he donated it and, uh, you know, he thought it was just a regular telephone. Looks much like a telephone as a, you know, receiver and uh, microphone set up here. Old school, very heavy. It's like, uh, it's like a, uh, I don't know, is that Bakelite on there? But uh, it's a very cool retro. It's got that burled effect on uh, the finish that if, if you were to buff this up, if we're, if we're going to do a full restore on this and buff that up, that just looks fantastic when it, when you clean it up and get the buffer on it and all that little sparkly bits shine right through. But uh, a lot of years of use on here. So it's not a telephone. It's a dictograph. Uh, from what we know, dictograph was a uh, corporation started in the early 1900s. Um, this is for inter-office communication, you know, the uh, intercom for, you know, the boss would sit there on his desk. He'd have that big wooden thing with the switches. That would be like the master unit. And then I guess all these um, would be throughout the office building and um, they would connect to that, I, I guess. Now, here it, you would think this is like a rotary thing, but I believe... This had like a, a switch button on here where you could just switch between certain inputs. And I don't know if that's a call button or if you need to have that down for your speaker to be on or your microphone. I'm not sure. Got a regular hook button. But there you can see it had a couple inputs on there. Had all Weir and uh, BSM. So probably just two inputs you click back and forth. I imagine there might have been a third on there. Uh... I think this is, again, a Bakelite base. This is metal here. Um, I love the Art Deco look on the back. Isn't that cool with this, this little detail here? And we can get some idea of the dates by looking at uh, the uh, trademarks. For instance, there's, there's one right there. of the Dictograph trademark, the D with the lightning bolts going through it. I think that's pretty cool. Awesome looking trademark right there. And you can look up that logo here. Now, I originally thought this was like 30s or before, but according to uh, looking up trademarks, that form of their logo was used in the 50s. So this could be a lot newer than I thought. But once we get this open and take a look inside, um, chances are a lot of the components do have dates um, on stamped on them and we'll be able to get an idea of really how old this is 
once we get in it. Nothing really on the back too revealing. This sticker, which uh, is half tore off, so that was probably like, a, you know, an ownership thing. Don't take it out of the office because uh, that's the, uh, you know, security number or whatever. Four rubber feet. I assume this is how we get the bottom off. We uh, unscrew that and pop the bottom off. Uh, there's a couple screws up here, which I assume takes this housing off. Anyways, we'll get to all that. It's not going to be a terribly long show, I don't think. We'll see where it goes and uh, take a look at the dictograph. Like I said, I did have some technical issues setting this up before. Had my second overhead camera ready to go uh, for some reason on this newer computer. Doesn't like that second camera. Kept shutting down the whole computer. So I'm going to have to uh, very low tech grab my camera and make it the overhead camera. So bear with the camera jostling going on right now. And that'll be it for uh, looking at me, thankfully. You'll only be looking downward from now on. So here we go. Let's see if I can find somewhere to hook, paint, uh, put this. Work that around there. Uh, uh, top notch television right there. Uh, yeah. Professional. Professional outfit right here. Ooh, that's. Get up there, you. Okay. Oh, messy. Messy desk. Crotch area. Hope you appreciate that. Let me know in the chat if you appreciate my crotch being in the shot. How's that? Is that going to stay? There we go. Centered up. Where else are you going to get this live action? But I'll start to continue. Okay. Tie up there, but that's okay because we can go like this. See? Look. And then I can get more light on it. There, light up the situation. So there's that uh, finish I was talking about. Isn't that neat? So first of all, easiest thing to do when investigating an old telephone is to open up the uh, the receiver and the microphone super easy just unscrew these you know we've all seen the old detective movies that's where you put the bug when you're planting a bug you put it in there that comes off and that comes right out of there it just sits on your contacts underneath well here's what we know about that right it's from uh, northern electric that's canadian manufacturer all of our telephones would have that What do we got on here? Okay, so we have our first stamp. Of course, my phone's ringing. I never get any phone calls, but ignore. Ignore the marketer. Okay, uh, so we have a patent number on here. Bunch of patent numbers. Uh, let me see if I can show you that. And then the actual real date is that one right there, 749. So that's our, like I said, we were thinking 50s by that logo. And now we're getting a bit of confirmation. We got uh, 749 for a year on uh, the microphone. And believe it or not, you can still buy these. There's, there's a company in Kingston, Ontario that uh, they have brand new stock of these things, new old stock. So this does wear out the microphone bit, you know, the diaphragm in there can crack and come loose. These, these aren't known to fail after a while. And that's why they're so easy to replace. You can just get a new one. So uh, old telephone, old telephone, something like that. It's called in Kingston, Ontario. Nothing else hidden in there. So that was... Microphone, what do we say is 49. Let's take a look at uh, the speaker here. 
this one should be wired in. It's not going to pop out as easy. Oh, that one did just pop right out. There's the contacts. And what do we got here? Patent number goes from 25 to 25 to 55. And there's the date on there. Again, we're 49 again, I think. Yeah, 49. So uh, they never had to replace these. Or they replaced them once in 79. So that's neat. Again, you can totally buy that. If you needed to replace it. And they do wear out. So there's that. Okay, so we got 1949. If you're just joining us, we are pulling apart a uh, dictograph right here. Abandoned on the side of the road. Uh, we're opening up. See if we can find more dates, see how it works. Um, I'm hoping the if I turn the feet enough, <laughs> they'll just come out. That one... It does unscrew, yeah. Okay. Don't forget to say hi in the chat. Appreciate everyone stopping by. Uh, you know, I'm sure you hit the like button already and shared it on all your social medias because where else are you going to get this kind of exciting uh, video presentation of an old uh, intercom being taken apart? Well, this one comes right out. One foot off. What could be in here? Of course, if we can't get these off, this is a this is a whole bust. That one doesn't want to come off. Might have to get a precision screwdriver in there. There is a, a slotted head on these. Oh, can't be easy. This one is so wore out. <laughs> All right. Trying to, time to bring in the big guns. <sighs> Let's see here. Sorry about that. Whoa. Screwdriver package. Almost ready to go here. Almost like I almost like I knew what I was doing. There, that came out much better. Oh, sorry. Hitting the microphone. And what does it reveal? Well, there's a whole bunch of stuff in there. Now, I'm no electrician, so I'm not going to give you answers of what all this is. <laughs> but I'm not seeing a bell. There's no bell in here. Is there a buzzer? Oh, wait, would this, what's that contact for? Wow. Okay. So 
Yeah, someone had to come in here and solder all these spots to uh, where this telephone links up to and actually hand wrote in the inputs there. I don't know how well that's showing up. Right in there. So I guess this is as many inputs as this phone could take. And they label it up there. Um, oh, wait, this thing. That's your bell or your buzzer, or, right? That's uh, that would rattle. Am I right on that? Help me out, anyone? And this has a contact switch there. That's what the button is hooked up to. That thing. Hey, I tuned into this video where a guy had no clue what he was looking at when he opened up a phone. That was, it was exciting. Well, we got the, the rattle out. Hmm. Well, no other date codes in here. That I can see. It's definitely uh, the Bakelite outer shell. Bakelite's like an older plastic that was widely used. Well, this thing is right loose. Whatever this, that's where the screw came from. This assembly with this, I don't know, capacitor in here. This thing is super loose. So that screw that came out, that was holding that thing down. Whatever the heck that did. And uh, yeah, I got no other answers for you. I'm gonna put that screw back though, because you know that seems like a reasonable thing to do. If I can get my fingers in there, I'm no surgeon. And uh, slotted screws are not the best to work with. I don't know how companies went that long using slotted screws. To... You dirt bag, get in there. Get in there. You son of a slot. Get that. Okay. Now that's not working. We'll save that guy for later. Uh, what else can we look at in here? So get this. Oh, that must be the hook. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. So that the hook, as in this hook, hook button, uh, that triggers this whole assembly right there. which uh, applies the contacts, which I guess cancels the call. So that's not a buzzer. I just thought it was a, a buzzer because like if you had chimes in a phone, it would, would kind of look like that. But uh, that's the contact closure. And so no, no buzzer in this. How would you know you're getting a phone call or the boss was ringing you? I don't, how does this, what does this thing even do? Is that attached to the button? No. What would fire this contact? I don't know. Hey, I watched this great video today. This guy took apart a phone. I have no clue. No clue what anything did. But it looked cool. Ah, I like this circuit board with the actual writing on there. That's cool. And apparently call that guy. Took him right off the board. No need him anymore. So the only other thing we can take apart is 
Uh, these two screws up here, let's take a look. That should pop off this metal housing, uh, which could be good or bad, probably bad, because that would, uh, it's synced in with that hook. Oh yeah, there she goes. So the only date confirmations we have so far is on uh, on the receiver and the microphone, which really doesn't tell us much because those could have been replaced at any time. Okay, those screws, uh, peers, they didn't do much. They let me bend this housing, the metal bit that's clad onto this Bakelite base. I don't know why you'd want to... Oh, I bet you I got to take this off. I got to take that off to get this off. And really, I don't know what good... It's not. We're not going to find anything in there anyways. And I'm not just saying that because I didn't bring... Uh, pliers down here to take that off. I'm not, I'm not making excuses. Uh, hmm. Hmm. What do you think? Should I take that off? I'm not, I'm not seeing anything in the chat telling me to go ahead. That will have to come off eventually if we're going to put a new switch on there. That's for sure. Hmm. All right. Oh, it's got a nice smell to it. It's like, uh, it smells like grandparents. It smells like grandparents. Oh, that's nice. Nice smell right there. Um, I'm surprised there's no other date, date code stamped in here anywhere. When you take apart, uh, like your antique phone, there is all kinds of dates stamped on all the components, but... Not seeing much here. Oh, wait a minute. There's there's a 40, but I, that might be what that capacitor is all about. So that might be it. That might be it for this uh, for this big show here, because I don't know where else we can go with it. So you got an idea in the chat where you think we should go. But that is taking apart the the, uh, the dictograph client. Uh, receiver microphone edition. Like I said, this would have had been hooked up to a master in uh, the big boss's office. He'd hit a switch. I would have thought this thing buzzed, but I don't see a buzzer in here. Unless one of these things is actually a buzzer, but I don't, I'm not getting that impression unless it's under this circuit board. No. Of course, there's this whole thing. This this is confusing me. What that is, with this little little switch on there. So what the heck did this button do? Hmm. All right. Well, hopefully, someone more technically inclined than me will take a look at this and inform me in the comments what the heck is going on in here. And uh, if they've seen anything like this before. Now, you look up uh, Dictograph on the Internet, there's not a lot of information on these. And there's certainly not many available for sale. And it's uh, certainly a lost piece of technology. But I think it's pretty cool. I think it'll look good if it gets cleaned up. Like I said, this body has got that same finish that the receiver has. And uh, when you buff that up, ooh, that is going to look... Super nice. All those highlights from the Bakelite pop through. I've seen one of these Bakelite phones that was left in the sunlight purely by accident. And it came out looking like Technicolor marbly bliss. It just did so, so many weird, wild things in the sunlight. But, uh, yeah. So that's going to come out. That's going to look cool if we get that. If we bother 
to, uh, you know, at least restore the uh, finish of it. What do you guys think? Should we restore the finish? Is it worth it? Or should we put it back at the side of the road? I don't know. I think it's cool. I love lost technology. It's the best. Uh, Dictograph, they're not around anymore. They went around, they lasted a long time. They're bought up by several companies. I, they even had like a uh, burglar alarm uh, subdivision. They also had this insane, they were one of the first people to offer uh, listening devices for police departments or private investigators. Um, they had this, <laughs> they, had, they developed this microphone. It was, it was on a big, long cord, but you could lay that, uh, you know, it had a little receiver about the size of this, just the receiver and a huge, about a hundred foot long cord. And they advertised it as you could place that on a bookshelf or uh, anywhere in the big, long cord and take it to wherever you're going to do the listening. And uh, they patented it that way as the very first uh, listening device. Sure. We all need that. So I thought that was interesting. But uh, I think the company's pretty much dissolved now after they tried multiple ways to survive. Uh, you know, that's the way it is in uh, inter-office intercoms. Certainly not... Uh, not a big needed technology anymore. So there we have it. That was uh, opening up the dictograph. And for those researching these things and trying to find out more about it, hope that helped you out. And uh, please uh, go ahead and leave me a comment about uh, what you think uh, we found inside. And uh, what do you think this could be used for nowadays, if anything? Probably not. But uh, that's it. Okay, that's it, guys. I can't switch to another camera because we're limited. That's just the way it is with this YouTube live stream. I wanted to do it through YouTube for you guys because uh, the YouTube offers a 1080p resolution, whereas StreamYard, we, we, you know, it'd stick us down to 7, 720. So uh, I went through YouTube, but it limits us in other ways. Um, but thanks for joining us. Let me know what, we th what you think we should do. Do you want to see it? finished up you want to see what this finish looks like let me know in the comments don't forget to hit the like hit the subscribe and uh we'll see you next time more exciting stuff coming let's start to continue i just got to figure out how to close this stream down see you guys